My job is to cover space news for you guys, and we had a pretty late breaking story yesterday that I think is worth noting. So a few weeks ago, we found out that a Cygnus spacecraft was damaged while en route to the launch site in Florida. And I remember hearing about this and thinking that it probably wouldn't end so well, and now we have the conclusion. So NASA revealed this three weeks ago that a shipping container protecting the Cygnus spacecraft sustained damage while traveling to the launch site in Florida. And Cygnus is built by Northrop Grumman, and it's only one of two Western spacecraft that's even capable of delivering food, water, experiments, and other supplies to the International Space Station. And with Butch and Sonny's recent extended stay, we know that those supplies are crucial, especially when the unexpected expected happens. And you can see Tom Mueller, who was SpaceX employee number one, shared, as a result of Dream Chaser's delays, Starliner's problems, and the dropped Cygnus, NASA is now almost entirely reliant on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft to get its astronauts to the space station and to feed them. SpaceX to the rescue again. So this spacecraft was for NG-22 and this mission was scheduled for June. But Eric Berger is working overtime at Ars Technica. He reached out to Northrop Grumman to find out what exactly is going on with the Cygnus spacecraft that was damaged. Well, now we know that it's too damaged to fly. And check out this NASA statement. Following initial evaluation, there is also damage to the cargo module. The International Space Station program will continue working with Northrop Grumman to assess whether the Cygnus cargo model is able to safely fly to the space station on a future flight. But even if it's able to fly on a future flight, which would be NG-23, that will launch no earlier than in the fall. So what happens now because we need to keep those resupply missions going? Well, NASA is modifying the cargo on its next cargo flight to the ISS, the 32nd SpaceX Cargo Dragon mission, which will be launching in April. And NASA says that they will add more consumable supplies and food to help ensure sufficient reserves of supplies aboard the station. And here's another consideration that may be in the works. We know from the recent Starliner saga coming to a conclusion that the days of Starliner might not be over, and NASA's Steve Stitch even hinted that they may be wanting to fly it again. I think the last question, Marsha, was what, what, when do we have to decide Crew-12 versus the next step with with Starliner? And we probably have a little bit more time as we get into the summer and understand that the testing we're going to go do uh, to make that decision, uh, whether it be Crew-12 as the next flight or or Starliner, you know, we're also looking at uh, some options for Starliner, uh, should we need to, of flying it uncrewed. The vehicle has the capability to fly uncrewed if we need to. And so we'll kind of weigh all those things as we get the testing and analysis behind us. Boeing's done a good job of developing a new thermal model, which we're using to try to understand the changes we're gonna make in those dock houses. We'll add some tape and thermal barriers in different places. Um, So we have a little time to make that decision. So perhaps NASA will use it for a cargo mission That way it's uncrewed and they can get another flight out of Boeing's Starliner. But according to this article from Eric Berger with Ars Technica, NASA is still evaluating whether the vehicle can be certified for an operational crew mission or whether it would be better to perform an uncrewed test flight. So if they were to do that, Starliner would be able to ferry cargo to the ISS, but there's limited docking ports and limited time frames when the vehicle could fly. And there's more than just SpaceX cargo missions. We have FRAM2 launching very soon, uh, manned missions. So it's actually not as simple as it sounds. And the other interesting news headline that I think is worth sharing with you, the U.S. Space Force announced on Wednesday that it has certified United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket to conduct national security missions. This is a pretty big deal. With this certification of the Vulcan rocket, the Space Force is no longer only reliant on SpaceX. And this has been in the works for a while. But according to this press release from the U.S. Space Force, quote, assured access to space is a core function of the Space Force and a critical element of national security. Vulcan certification adds launch capacity, resiliency, and flexibility needed by our nation's most critical space-based systems. 
And this National Security Space Launch Certification is a rigorous process. Launch providers must be able to demonstrate their ability to design, produce, and qualify a new launch system that will successfully deliver national security space satellites to orbit. As I mentioned, Vulcan certification has been the culmination of several years of effort by the Space Force along with ULA. ULA needed to meet 52 certification criteria, including more than 180 discrete tasks, two certification flight demonstrations, 60 payload interface requirement verifications, 18 subsystem design and test reviews, and 114 hardware and software audits. And CEO of United Launch Alliance, Tori Bruno, said, quote, We are proud to have launched 100 national security space missions and honored to continue serving the nation with our new Vulcan rocket. We thank the Space Force for their collaboration and confidence, and we are honored to support our national security needs for many years to come. So those are the two big space headlines that have come up over the last 24 hours. And another one, which I just think is kind of fun, especially if you've been down to Starbase or want to go eventually, they are making a lot of progress on the new roundabout that'll be at the end of Highway 4. As Anthony Gomez shares on X, the past versus the future, the old section of tired Highway 4, beside the new one-inch rebarred solid concrete roundabout, which should be completed in a month. So that's going to make traffic flow a lot easier down there at Starbase. That's all I got for today's episode, but I'm trying to release more news information just in these brief episodes as I get them. I think it's something that you guys have liked in the past, and I'm going away for uh, about three weeks coming up, so I'm trying to get uh, content out there because I know I'm going to be gone, and it might be kind of hard to create content when I'm on vacation, but I'll do my best, and if that's something you're interested in as well, let me know, and I'll share some of my adventures with you that are not space-related. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.